welcome everyone to tonight's Bible study. Amen. I ask that we all please stand that are here. We can stand and join me in reverence in our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this very hour, Lord God, that you've given us to learn more of you and your great love. Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for those that are on their way out. Give them traveling grace, Heavenly Father, to make it to their destination and just love on you, Lord God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that every word tonight will be taken in in love and received in love, Lord God, and just mm, absorbed that we will retain it in our hearts and take it outside these four walls and share it with others. Father, we just thank you. I decrease right now, Lord God, as you increase. I thank that your people will hear your voice. They will feel your presence and get more love from you. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So, tonight's study again is entitled Grounded in Grace. Grounded in Grace. You know, last week we went over quite a few things dealing with grounded in grace. Uh, first of all, we gave the definition of grounded, uh, meaning to have root, take root, you know, and, and being, oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Being rooted in God's word, in God's love, in his grace, amen, meaning that you're steadfast and unmovable, you know, just like the word says in, in 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, says, Therefore, my brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your work is not in vain. Amen. I see you back there, too, Elder. So um, we, we will be going to that area tonight, uh, 1 Corinthians um, 15 and 58. But I want you all to understand that we are commissioned to do some things for the kingdom of God. Amen. If we call ourselves the children of God, and I'm talking about the children of the Most High God, we have a great commission to do, and that is to spread the Word of God, share the love of God, draw others to Christ, amen, through love as we were drawn to Him in love. Amen. Go ahead, Elder. Amen. I was just going to bring up how I like how Last week, um, Pastor gave a simplified alternative way of, for people to realize when you're talking about being grounded in grace by you saying that you are grounded in Jesus. Amen. And you're giving them a better way of looking at it. Amen. And being able to apply it better by you being grounded in Jesus. Because a lot of people will be able to see it better in that way as if, if they're looking and focusing on Jesus because he's the one that that made it possible for us to receive it. Amen. Amen. That's awesome that you would say that, and we were going to uh, go into the area again tonight anyway, um, and you'll, you'll understand once we get there to that area. Amen. Um, you know, being grounded in Jesus, as, as Elder um, had pointed out, because we know that Jesus is love. Amen. And we were given grace as a gift through our faith. Amen. Through Christ Jesus. And Jesus being love, that means that the grace that we have is love. Amen? So, since we went there, Elder, I, I thank you for helping me out. I, I see that so, Yeah, correct. Go ahead. So, what I hear is, is you grace as, as a noun. So, what I hear is Jesus is grace. Amen. He loves Jesus. Amen. That's, that's what I'm hearing. Amen. That's, you're hearing correctly. You're hearing correctly. And, and I, I like the way it just went there because we, we talk about in John uh, 15, 7. Amen. Let me get there real quick. John 15, 7. And I'm going to go with the King James Version on this. Amen. King James Version of John 15, 7 says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, 
Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Amen. Okay. So, if you abide in me, who's up here? This is Jesus. This is red. It is. It is in red, so we know Jesus talking. And my words abide in you. Now, it's funny because what we hear here, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, well, Jesus is speaking of himself again. Because we know that in John 1 and 14, it says that, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and that was Jesus again. So Jesus here saying, if you abide in me, and I abide in you. Amen? Amen. So you can ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. And we all know that the word shall is will. It will be done. There's no might be, there's no, I see, it, uh, there's no might be, there's no, uh, it's possible. No, it will be done. Amen. Go ahead, Deacon. Amen. I would just like to read this in the message right now. Yeah, go ahead. I'm just going to read 5 through 8. Okay. I am the vine, you are the branches. When you are joined with me and I with you, the relation is intimate and organic. The harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. Anyone who separates from me is dead wood, mm. gathered up and thrown on the bonfire. But if you make yourselves at home with me, and my words are at home in you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. This is how my Father shows who he is. When you produce grapes, when you mature as my disciples. Amen. Amen. That, that is possibly good, you know. The message version always brings it out. It gives you a little bit more to, to hang on to and to understand better. You know, um, it, it's funny because that word abide means to take up residency. Amen. To, to live in this word. Amen. The word living in you. So um, that's that's the same way we're supposed to do when we're talking about being grounded. Amen. Amen. I see you hand here. Go ahead. Deacon. I was almost done. Let's uh, go. Okay. <laughs> when I read that in the message version for me, when I think about home, like my refuge, my place of peace, yeah. my place of protection, you know, a place that I call my own. I have territory, power, and and that feeling should, you should be having that feeling being in Christ. Amen. You're rooted in Christ, that he is your protection. Amen. He is your rest. He is your place of comfort. He is your place of refuge. And we should stay grounded in Christ. Amen. Stay Amen. living him. If we continue to stay grounded mm -hmm. in Christ, mm -hmm. the abundance, the blessings, the knowledge and wisdom that we get is so much greater than what the world can ever provide. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Pastor Beach, you elder. What I enjoy about this is I talked about um, but if you make yourselves at home with me and my words yes. are at home in you. Yes. You know, that, that makes me think about but like when someone comes by the house I say, hey, make yourself at home. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying is, hey, get comfortable. Mm -hmm. Relax. You know, <coughs> treat, it, treat, it like, treat it like you live here. Uh -huh. And this is what he's saying to us. Hey, get comfortable. Relax in me. Amen. You know, make Amen. yourself at home in me. This is, and this is, you know, and what I love about this is that when you hear the word of God a day, uh, and you're under the right covenant, you, and you're being taught under the right covenant, it just makes the word. I mean, it just makes it so much better for you. It Amen. just opens up to you. It's, it's like it illuminates to you. You know. And here we're able to be comfortable in Christ. You know, in religion, you can't be comfortable. A amen. You can, amen. I don't know how many of you have ever been in religion. I've been here, and it is utterly impossible to be comfortable in religion because there is always something that has, that has to be done to, to uh, try and always get you closer when, you know, you, you, when God has already opened the door for you to be right there. But religion always makes it seem like it's hard work. Here, 
Jesus, through grace, Jesus tells us that, hey, make yourself at home. Come on in. Make yourself at home. You know, I'm not, I'm not putting no rules and regulations on, you know, keep your shoes on if you want to. Amen. 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 I see you, Elder, but I want to expound on something real quick here. And I love the way that was put, you know, um, uh, Jesus saying, hey, make yourself at home. Get comfortable, you know. The thing about it is he's giving you freedom. He's freeing you of anything that could be weighing you down. You don't have to walk on pins and needles, you know, wondering if you're going to knock something over in my house. Amen. Wondering if, if uh, you know, if you say something wrong, I'm going to tell you to get out of my house. Wondering if you don't look the way you're supposed to, I'm going to tell you to leave my house. No, Jesus said, make yourself at home. Come as you are. Amen. With everything that you've got, yeah, all yeah, your flaws, yeah. all your, everything that Bring you, it. you know, and, and I really love it because when I come here in this setting, in this house right here, where there's love and grace abounding, everything that I could have did wrong or even think that is wrong leaves me. I'm freed of it. I'm not worried about it. Uh, putting me in any type of bind or a, a status or, you know, someone looking at me the wrong way or someone whispering to someone and me wondering what they're whispering about. That's none of my business. If you ain't talking to me about it, it ain't none of my business. And I don't have to worry about what you're saying because I'm free. I am guilt-free, amen, of anything that I may have done today. You know, I, I could have said something to somebody or cut somebody off or did something that made somebody upset. But I, I'm, I'm free of that because no one can judge me about that. No one can condemn me for that. I've been forgiven of anything that I've done. Was it right? No, but I'm forgiven of it. And I don't have to have a guilt conscience behind it. Amen? Go ahead, Elder. Amen. As you were speaking earlier, and then uh, Deaconess Lock spoke and then Pastor spoke, first things that came to my mind and made me think of was um, Matthew 18, 19 and 20, the New Living Translation. And I'll read it. It reads as this. I also tell you this. If two of you agree down here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together because they are mine, I am there among them. And it was made me think of what Pastor was saying when he was talking about, hey, come, come dwell with me. And what Deacon's was reading when he was like, hey, come dwell with me. And, uh, and how you were saying how when it was saying in there that he was the word, and it was talking about the word, and he was talking about being with him. He's, when you're gathered, you're gathered with him. Amen. In him. Speaking about him. And so when you're speaking about him and dwelling with him, he's there. Amen. Because he is the word. So when you're gathering, whenever we're having conversation about this word, we're having conversation about him. Amen. So he is in the midst. And so since he's there and we're come and we're conversing about him, it's already done. Amen. Because like like you were saying, when we're focused on that and focused on him, we're we're not thinking about anything we're on. We're not worried about anything. All we're speaking is victory. All we're speaking is love. All we're speaking is being above and never again beneath. Amen. Amen. You know, and, and, and that is well said. I want to go back to um, 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. The King James Version reads like this. Therefore, my, my beloved brethren, that means all of God's children, brethren and sisters, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know, that your labor is not in vain. Amen? In the Lord. So, always abounding means that you're continuously, continuously doing God's will. Amen? And, and that it's a love. Amen? Always abounding, meaning that, just like when we're talking about uh, grounded in grace, you're anchored in his word. You're anchored in his word, and everywhere you go, if you can go anywhere without speaking of his word, I mean, I don't think we can go anywhere without speaking of Christ. Because everywhere we go, we can share him because he's with us. Amen? He's in us. What's in a man will come out of a man. How much of Jesus do you have in you? I see you, Elder. 
How much of Jesus do you have in you? How much word do you have in you? Do you have a word for any and everyone that you come across? You should. Amen? That's our daily prayer. Every morning we pray and ask God, and we thank God. And as we have to ask him, we thank him for giving us a word to encourage and uplift anybody that we come across. I don't care who it is. You know, for those of you that know me, I know no strangers. Amen? I like to say I don't have any enemies. Well, I don't consider them enemies. They may consider me one. I don't know, but that ain't my business. That's between them and God. Amen? But with me, I love everybody. With the love of Christ. Because I know what true love is. Amen. Go ahead, Elder. Amen. As you're talking about being anchored and rooted, when you are anchored and rooted in Jesus, then you can't be sifted <laughs> by every person that's coming and trying to think that they're telling you something that may sound holy. They're, when they're uh, giving you religion, giving you uh, the word mixed with feelings and emotions and everything, trying to twist up the word when they're trying to give you those things, you you know that, hey, that, that, that isn't the word. Amen. You're, you're trying to give me your feelings and your emotions that, hey, if you, if you were trying to explain it like this, show me another witness, meaning scripture. Amen. Show me another scripture backing exactly what you're saying. And everything that you that you should be saying as it is in the word always ends on an encouraging and uplifting and positive note. Amen. It never ends on a bad uh, note. A fire and brimstone and <laughs> being bashed and feeling less than and shameful. That's not the God that we that's not Jesus. That's not love. Both of them are love. Amen. So when you are rooted in him, you know that everything that is given is given out of love. And it's given with love, and love is in it. If any hate or condemnation or judgment is in it, that's not Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Deacon. Amen. This is really good. Um, just piggyback off of uh, what everyone said, such a um, elder lock. You know, we have to keep the word in us. So when we do come across someone um, who tries to pull a fast one, or even a conversation. We can, you know, I remember I was uh, talking to a loved one, and I had to um, correct them with love, of course, but also send them, um, I sent them text and told them to read the scripture. Not so they won't be saying, get it from what I'm saying, no, it's coming from the word. And so they loved it because um, someone was trying to, um, Put a, pull a fast one on us. Mm -hmm. And so, and then I love uh, being grounded. When we're grounded in God's word, and I thank God for his grace and his mercy, which endures forever, mm -hmm. forever. In spite of what we do daily, he still loves us. Amen. Amen. I see. I, I want to share with you. No, go ahead. I'm going to let you go because there's a story I'm going to tell. But go ahead. Okay, I'm just going to read from the message. Amen. And as I was reading it in the message, it was uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, with all, this going, with all this going for us, my dear, dear friends, <laughs> stand your ground. Amen. And don't hold back. Throw yourselves into the work of the master. Amen. Confident that nothing you do for him is a waste of, of time or effort. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's very deep, very deep. You know, I, I want to share with you all a true story. Um, this happened not long ago. I was at my second home, Lowe's, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, and I was in line, had a few things that I was getting ready to purchase, and there was a, another gentleman beside me, because there was two lines, and so we were conversing. But then a woman walked, in front of us, not looking back to see where the line was. And um, so she stood there, and the guy looked at me, I looked at him, and you know, I said, excuse me, ma'am, you know, the line's over here. And she said, oh, okay. But then a young gentleman was with her, young guy, I call him a kid because he's much younger than me, but um, he was like, 
Oh, well, she didn't know. You could have came in like that. You had to come. I said, whoa, 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 hold up. Hold up. I just said, excuse me, ma'am. That was showing her respect. No, but you and him was looking at each other like this. I said, let me tell you something. I just said, excuse me, ma'am, because she didn't see the line. So then he turned around. She was saying, oh, it's okay, it's okay. He turned around, and he got to saying stuff like, well, you know, I just don't like that. It riles me up, this and that. But he had a shirt on that said, Jesus is love. <laughs> so I said, um, hey, listen, let's not give the wrong representation of who we represent. <laughs> and immediately, the atmosphere changed. You're right, my brother. I'm sorry, man. I apologize. And he couldn't stop apologizing. I said, it's okay. You get caught up sometimes. And so the situation was handled. You know, he showed me love. I showed him love, and we went on about our business. But as I was in line, there's a couple more people that came. And like I said, this is my second home. So a guy came up to me and said, man, he just don't know if that was the old you. I'm like, wait a minute. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm looking at him like, did you know me a long, long, long time ago? Because this has been me for a while now. You know, and I, I just laughed about it. And the clerk, she was like, I knew you were going to start preaching. <laughs> I knew you were going to start preaching. And that diffused the situation. I said, what you got me to go up? You know, I said, because it ain't that serious. Yeah, that's right. It wasn't that serious. But this is why we have to be grounded in grace. Grounded in Jesus, because if we let our flesh overtake us, we're subject to say anything through reactions. But I thank God that my reaction is his default, love. Amen. My default is love. And I could do nothing other than show love because that's what's in me. No matter what the situation looked like, no matter how ugly it could have gotten, I just thank God that love abound. Amen. Amen. Who had their hand up? Okay. <laughs> Nevertheless, amen, we're moving forward. So, grounded in grace, grounded in grace, grounded in Jesus. You know, we, we have to understand that when you're grounded in Jesus, it's no more about you. Everything you do is not about you. Just as the song says, it's not about us. It's all about Jesus. Everything we do, we should be doing to the glory of God. Amen? Amen? This is who we are representing, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? I see you, sir. So when you, when you wake up in the morning, you have a personal relationship with the Lord. You, 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 wake him, you thank him for waking you up. You start communing with him and, and conversing with him, sharing with him love. Before you walk out of your house, even if you're not going nowhere, before you start walking around your house, you've been talking to the Lord. And if you ain't going nowhere, most of the time, you're going to talk to the Lord mostly all day. It's something that you're going to say, whether it's over the phone, whether it's on Zoom, Internet, whatever, whoever you talk to, Jesus is going to come up in the conversation. Just like my wife was saying Saturday, you know, um, yeah, she was feeling some type of way for a minute, but her and the Lord was having a ball. They were partying, dancing. And I thank God for that. So when we're grounded in grace, this is the way we need to start our day. Wake up thanking God, giving him praise for what he's already done and what he's about to do. Amen? Go ahead, Elder. Amen. Um, listening to your story, it made me think of what we've been saying in here lately. And that's when, we, when we've been talking about this love and this grace. Is it doesn't matter how people treat you, it's how you respond. Amen. It's how you treat them in return. Amen. So, like you said, um, uh, that that old saying that people always say, "Kill them with kindness" or whatever. <laughs> you just uh, loving the hell out of them. <laughs> that's that's pretty much what you did. You loved the hell right on about them. Amen. So you, you loved the hell out of them by showing them love speaking love and so like I said where where Jesus is the enemy must flee. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Where light is, darkness can't remain. Amen. Amen. You're soft, exactly right. Soft answer turns away wrath. Exactly right. That's the word. That's the word. You know, so 
again, uh, I like that Proverbs, I want to say that's Proverbs 15. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 15 1. A soft answer turns away wrath. Amen. When you are in a situation where people are, you know, uh, all uptight and, you know, just don't know what to say, they're moody, they're frowning, and I mean, ain't got nothing good to say. Can't even smile. A soft answer. Jesus loves you. Hey, bro, how you doing? You know, like that shirt you got on. Like that hat you got on. A compliment, you know. You ain't even got to like the hat. Just give a compliment. Because that'll turn some things around for some people. You know? I shouldn't have said it like that, but you know. <laughs> Praise God, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. I'm just saying, you know, could be an Ohio hat, you know. Ohio <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> but, you know, hey, I'm, I'm man, like that hat you got on for you. Amen. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Amen. Praise God. But a soft answer does turn away wrath. Amen. You know, it's kind of hard for someone to uh, say something nasty to you or give you an evil look when you're t- talking kind and nice to them. Some people can. They, they can because that's just the way they are. But don't let that turn you from being who you are. Amen? Go ahead, Elder. Hey Amen. Uh, as you were talking, it made me think of uh, Sunday when we had went to the movie and stuff. And uh, at, the, at the end of the movie, I had went to the restroom and uh, I had on my hat that uh, says God over everything. And uh, I was washing my hands. And as I was drying them, the uh, uh, older gentleman came to me like, man, let me get that hat. <laughs> and, and before... I could say anything, he had turned around, because I was going to give it to him. Uh-huh. I was going to bless him with it. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Because all that's doing is doing what we're commissioned to do. Mm-hmm. And that's Amen. spread the good news. And Amen. so, hey, if you want to be a billboard for the same Jesus that I love, and come, hey, I will give it to you. Amen. Just like Pastor don't have his hat that we had the same, because he did the same thing. He was blessed to be a blessing. Someone asked for it. He, here you go. There you go. And, and I was going to do the same thing, but I couldn't find him. He, 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 had, he had left so quick. Amen. I was going to do that same thing, showing God's love. Amen. And you was only doing what's in you. Amen. That's in you. So praise God, you know, um, again, grounded in grace. A lot of people, um, and I love it the way, you know, it's been put um, time and time again right here that grace, Jesus is grace because Jesus is love. And think about it. When you have a a bill, when you get a notice, a lot of times um, after the due date, they'll give you a grace period. Amen? A grace period to gain whatever you need to gain or at least work on getting whatever you need to get. That grace, I mean, in that aspect, they don't look at it as showing you love, as business for them, but I see it as showing me some love. You know, you're caring enough for me to give me a little time to get what I need to have. You know, and I thank God for that grace period. You know, um, whether they know it or not, they're doing a good thing. They're doing a good thing. You know, because some people just have no grace for anyone. Hey, the first is due. The second, you're out. You know, that's, that's not love. That's not love. Because everyone falls on hard times sometimes. You know, I don't care who it is. Even the people that are, you know, making it hard for others falls on hard times. And it's just like the man that um, in the Bible where it talks about, you know, um, the talents. You know, the story about the talents. One was given one talent, one was given five, one was given ten. You know, but the one that would, that had the one hid his away. The others did some prosperous things with theirs, you know. It's just saying, hey, you know what? Do right by what you have. Go ahead, Elder. Amen. Um, and as we had started off talking about making how you can make grace more easily applied to people and stuff, it made me think of uh, 2 Corinthians 12 9 where it says, my grace is sufficient. Mm. Where, you, where you can say, you can change and say, my love <laughs> is sufficient. Amen. For them to be able to apply it and make it more applicable to themselves, to where, like you said, they may not know grace like that. Then you can you can interpret it like that, my love, because 
even in the scripture where it says love covers a multitude of wrongs. So God is love. Jesus is love. So guess what? His love is sufficient. Amen. His love is what is missing. Anytime you have an emptiness, you have a spot in your in your heart that needs to be filled, it's because that love is missing. And that love is Jesus. And so guess what? If you have it, it is sufficient for you. It Amen. shall supply all of your needs through his riches and glory. It is enough. There, you will, as I said in the scripture, you will lack for nothing. You will want for nothing. And you'll be able to go to him and make your request known. Amen. Knowing Amen. that it's already done. Not it's going to be done, but that it is already done. And you can reach the highest level of faith, and that's rest. Amen. Amen. Being able to rest in his love. You know. And, and that, again, see, that's that's where grace is so important that we know what grace is. Grace being love, you know. In order to reach the highest level of rest is to know God's love. His grace is his love. When you are in God's grace, in his love, you have nothing to worry about. You have nothing to worry about, but yet we do. This is why grace again has to abound. Because we don't know how to reach that level of love that we should at all times. Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I myself have loved you. Amen? Why did he have to tell us that? Because we don't know how to love ourselves. If we don't know how to love ourselves, we don't know how to give grace to anybody else. Hmm. So, my brother comes to me and say, hey, can I borrow $50? Yeah, not a problem. But I should just say, hang on a second, let me, let me check something out and just give it to him. Even though, you know, the Bible says we, we'll be the lenders and not the borrowers. But when it comes to our brothers and sisters, if you can give it to them, give it to them. If they're coming to you in need, don't you know they're still going to be in need? After they give it back to you, most of the time. Amen? That's not all the time. But I've been in a position, I can only speak for me, I've been in that position where I ask for help, but I ask for help in knowing that when I give it back, I'm still going to need help. So maybe I shouldn't have asked to borrow it. Could you let me have it? <laughs> if it be possible, could I have $50? You know, could I work for $50? You know, but that word borrow, it, it, it holds you in bondage. To borrow is in bondage. I'm just going to say it like it is. That's the truth. Because you now owe someone something. And the Bible tells you not to owe any man anything but to love them. Amen? Go ahead, Elder. Amen. Amen. We have to get to that point of removing shame associated with ask, requesting help. Mm -hmm. Because when we're going to the Father, we treat the Father like man. <laughs> and with mankind, we'll be shameful to ask them for some help thinking of how they're going to look at you and how they're going to talk about you behind your back or feel or whatever or say. And then they, they carry that same thing over to the Father. Mm. Well, I don't, I don't want to ask God because maybe I won't be able to uh, get back in church anymore. Or maybe he'll, he'll never bless me again because I got myself into this and, and I knew I shouldn't have. Or because, and it pushes people away. And all that is is religion and tradition. It is not God. God is of love. Amen. And, and as we always say, you can't out -sin his grace or you can't out -sin his love. Amen. You can't out sin it. Only, only thing you can do is you can reject it. You can reject it and reject him, and that's when you have fallen from his love. That's when you have fallen from grace. When you choose to reject him and turn back to the law, to that bondage, you reject him or reject his love and, and choose to go back into bondage, 
that's when you have fallen from grace, as we continue to say here, not because you have sinned. Amen. Let me let me correct something here. Fallen from grace, first of all, you, you got to remember that you were never given the law. Remember, you were never given the law. So, in order to fall from grace, that means to turn back to the law, but we wasn't given the law. So, if we never received God's grace, we're just not receiving him. Amen. Amen. So, I just want to make sure that we understand that. That to fall from grace is to go back to something that you was given. And we wasn't given the law, so we can't fall back to the law. Amen. The religion tried to teach us the law and give us the law. You're right. But that's something that was never given to us by God. Amen. Because we as Christians, you can only be a Christian after the law has been fulfilled. Amen. So, and, and I, I love the way you went with that, Elder Love. You know, um, we got to remember that um, God's love, God's grace, God's love, Again, is a gift that has been given to us. And we didn't do anything to earn this. It was a gift. That's just like the holiday seasons will come and our children, our grandchildren, been acting up more than half the year. But when this holiday season comes, ooh, I got a list. I want this. I want that. I want this. Well, I got one list for you. Just get right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Y'all get that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Deaconess. Well, this is really good. Um, Pastor had mentioned um, uh, how religion and how the law and how religion will keep you in a bondage. Mm -hmm. There are so many people who are lost in religions where they just don't know how to get out because they, to them, they think that's the norm, you know, um, and so how so many churches where uh, women don't have, in, in their sight, women don't have the right to speak. They want them to sit there and just stay humble and ask questions only, and then, um, mentioned about um, asking, you know, sometimes you have to intercede for others but also let them know they have to trust and believe in God and letting them know that, you know, what we're praying for um, you have to you have to trust God as well um, when you're praying and asking for something, like you say um, a gift um, God's love is a gift to us you know uh, who would only, who would give their only begotten son Yes, he did. And, and I think that, again, it goes to that grace and mercy, which endures forever. Amen. Amen. You know, um, when we first opened up this study, you know, I read something that said, all praises to God for his grace and mercy being sufficient for everything we need. However, most people take humbleness for weakness. But if we humble ourselves to the Spirit, you will allow the strength of God to show himself to be true in our weakness of humbleness. You know, too many people think that to be humble means to be weak and get ran over. Let people just do you any kind of way. That is not humble. Being humble means that you'll take the higher road. If someone thinks that they're right, okay. When you know that you're right, just know that you're right. You ain't got to prove that to nobody. It'll prove itself in the end. Don't be so quick to react, which will cause you to do something that you might regret. So when we're being humble to the spirit, that means that you're putting God first before this situation. You're allowing God to show himself to be your protector. Man may be a judge sitting in a, in a seat, looking at you, judging you. But the truth of the matter is, 
If you're right, God will be your attorney. He will fight your battles. We say it all the time that facts may say this, but the truth is this. The facts may show that you was in a place at the time that they say a crime took place. But the truth says that you didn't do anything wrong. So how are you going to fight against that? We have proof that you were there at the time of the scene of the crime. But did you see me do the crime? Is there evidence of my fingerprints on anything crime related? And if there isn't, there is a reasonable doubt. And they cannot hold you guilty where there's a reasonable doubt. That's the law of the land. But the truth of the matter is, I'm innocent and free in the eyes of my father because I know I didn't do anything wrong. And I'm going to stand on that. I'm going to stand on my grounds of grace, of love. That'll get you back there. Amen. Um, as you was talking, I had a last back there. My wife, because she was saying something that she, that she tells me all the time about picking your battles. Picking your battles, like, and as you say, I can only speak for me because sometimes I get caught up in that too. Of when, you, of how you said when, you, when you write about something, just be right. And stuff, instead of sitting there going to battle and going to war and going back and forth and going back and forth, like you said, and then, and then you're you're just adding to it and making it build up more and more instead of just being like, you know what, it's all right. Like I said, me, 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 and Jesus. No, you know what I'm saying? So, and you can't, you, can't, you can't force it onto someone else just like they can't force it onto you. So it's just, this is a never ending battle. And, this yeah. account, and one thing, especially if you're dealing with the word, one thing you never can do is argue the word. Amen. Let, let the word do the word. All by itself. Mm -hmm. And you just sow that seed, someone else will come water and God will give the increase. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Pastor. scenario you were using and I wasn't going to step further with it because in that scenario you know whether you did something wrong or not you know how you say I'm innocent because I didn't do anything wrong well all of us did something wrong <laughs> <laughs> and the thing about it is Jesus makes us innocent Amen. you know what, not you know not because we did or we didn't do something. He made us innocent because of what he did. You know, we talked about uh, how the Bible talks about where sin abounds, grace gives what more abounds. Amen. It has to. Why? Because we just we talked about it. Jesus is love. Well, God is love, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you look at that, the scripture says in First Peter 4 and 8 that Love covers a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. But then if you go to Proverbs 10 and 12, it says, love covers all sins. Amen. Not multitude, all. Amen. All right, all. And see, and so if grace, if Jesus, if love covers all, mm -hmm. then we have to, you know, no matter what goes on, you will never out sin Damn. It's impossible to do that. It is. You can't do it, no matter what, because he already tells us this, but love covers all sin. You know, people used to be like, well, you know, uh, such and such did this sin, they, they keep doing it, you know, and you forgive them. Well, they, and then you go to the word, well, the word that you forgive them, you know, seven times 70 in a day. And, and, and some people actually, they count it out, oh, 490 times, now I can go ahead and the bottom line is, the bottom line is, what he was saying was, nobody offend nobody 490 times in a day. All right, what he said was, hey, you know what? Just forgive them. Let, let love overcome whatever's going on. Amen. You know, let love overcome because if, if God tells us, if the scripture tells us to forgive somebody like that because we have to, you know, we have to love them. Amen. Then how much more? Does the Father have for us who fall short? Amen. 
Amen. And so we will never, I don't care what goes on, you will never out in God's grace. And even though um, God's grace is that good and that great, you know, people still think, well, you know, you just tell them folk they can go out and do anything they want. But see, that's just that's just it, though. Because if you're in love with the Lord, then you, you want to please him. So you want to do what is pleasing to him. Pleasing to him was, you know, as they say, kosher. You know? <laughs> you don't want to do things that's against the person that you, you know, you're in a relationship with. Amen. So, you know, we have to get, we as the children of God, have to understand it is about the relationship and not about religion. I don't know why folks think that Jesus came back to give us another religion. You know, Christianity has never been a religion. No. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Christianity is life. Amen. It's plain and simple. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm loving this because it, it just takes me to areas that most people don't want to understand. What I mean, don't want to understand, and I'm, I'm just going to put it this way, a, a man's preference, okay? Whom you want to be with is whom you want to be with, amen? That's who you love, that's where you find love that you feel, okay? It's a choice. It's a choice. Who am I to say who are you to love? You know what I'm saying? I can't pick and choose who my children love. I can't. That's between them and God. All I'm supposed to do is love them. Love everybody. Amen? So, who am I, first of all, to judge anybody? Amen to that. I can't. I don't have a heaven nor a hell to put anyone in. And who am I to look at a person and say that they're not godly? <coughs> they're not a child of God. I see you, others. Is it because of what they're doing? Is it because of how they look? How, how, how they speak? The way they walk? Exactly. 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 Because I'm quite sure somebody, if not everybody, can say the same thing about me. Dang, he got a bad bald head, short, always smiling, always singing, always talking about God. Praise God. Thank you. I receive that. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So. Go ahead, Elder. Amen. Um, as I was listening to Pastor, um, he was explaining it with the, with the uh, relationship and how you want to. If you look at it as the relationships that we have here on earth, like I, I love in the wedding vows where it says forsaking all others. <laughs> Meaning the, the husband forsakes all of the women for his wife. The wife forsakes all of the men for her husband. And when you join into that relationship, that love relationship with Jesus, that means you're forsaking all other teachings of mankind, and you are forsaking all other little idols and stuff, all them other gods that you may have been looking at and worshiping. And, and, and the one thing that we all uh, used to have as our God was our money our possessions, and all the things you're forsaking, all of that, and choosing to worship the creator instead of the created, you're forsaking all other beliefs in man-made stuff and accepting Jesus and his love, his teaching, his ways. And I said, once you choose to do all that, and you're working, with, just like when you're in a relationship here, you're working to constantly please each other. And, and doing things for each other to put smiles on each other's faces and stuff. Guess what? Even when we aren't working for him and trying to put smiles on his face, he continually, continually, because he has that unmerited, unmeasured love, unconditional love to where he gives at all times. And we are striving to be just like that to where, like, as he was saying, we'll get to that point of not trying to put frowns on his face, but I always want to put a smile on his face and do things out of love. Amen. And not doing things out of necessity. And say, oh, well, I'm just doing this just to check check the box. And stuff, I'm going to show up to church just to check the box. I'm going to walk somebody across the street just to check the box. <laughs> and I'm make it happen. No. Following his love. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Mrs. Mrs. 
pretty good. You know, I sit here and I'm piggybacking off of uh, Elder Locke. Um, I remember when we was at Mom's home, darling, and I was just sitting there and I was like, wow, just overwhelmed with all the people that were coming in. And, um, the, you know, they were saying how Mom um, introduced them to God, but also taught them that they have to learn and love God, that personal relationship one-on-one, um, yourself, mm -hmm. and how um, it, it made them stronger because at first they didn't know, they didn't know how, you know, you can give somebody a map and say read it. <laughs> you can give somebody, you know, follow the GPS, they're going to reroute it themselves. But because she introduced them to God and told them, that you have to be strong enough to hang in there and love God for yourself, where it's a personal one-on-one. -on -one. And so to see all those people come in and, and talk about how they loved her and she didn't change and how she introduced them to God who even loved them more than she did. Amen. Amen. Going back to what we were talking about, uh, how you are saying how people sit up and you know, they judge others, they condemn others, they got something always to say about others. You know, Paul was dealing with the Roman church, and um, and he was when he was dealing with the church in Rome, uh, they had a problem of thinking that number one, the reason they were righteous is because of what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so they had a real problem talking about everybody else, right? And so in Romans chapter 1, you'll see Paul list the whole slew of, of things that, you know, people have done. And because of them not believing in God and trusting God, he turned them over to, and, and, you know, turned them over to their own affections. But these are people who refuse to believe in God because they figured as long as they can do it, it was about their self-righteousness. As long as they they can do it, they 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 were like, hey, you know what? We believe a lie. They they didn't even believe the truth. They believe they like to believe the lie. They rather believe the lie, right? And so after they got finished trying to judge everybody and all this type of stuff, Paul was told them in uh, Romans chapter two, New Living Translation. He said, he said, you know, you must be saying, what terrible people you've been talking about? And you know, and, and the people, because Paul just got to you know, r ranting off about all of these different things that they were condemning people for, right? Mm -hmm. He said, so uh, what terrible people have you been talking about? And then Paul told them, but you are just as bad, and you have no excuse. When you say they're wicked and should be punished, you are condemning yourself, for you do the very same things. <laughs> That's what it is. It's an out to amen moment. Because nobody has a place to judge or condemn another person for doing anything, whatever a person is doing, whatever may not be right as we may think, uh, that's between them and God. And whether you think that they're doing something, you know, outlandish, for instance, you know, let me pick you, because I can remember being in this one choir and... And I was over the choir at the time, and then I had to go, I was going on a vacation or something, me and my wife and the kids, we were going somewhere, and so the choir, we had a nice choir too, we used to go around everywhere and sing, we, the choir, um, I asked the Lord, Lord, who would you have me to be in charge of the choir while I'm gone? And this person who the Lord showed me, she was pregnant at the time, right? But she wasn't married. And so when I left that purpose, when I said, okay, well, this is who God showed me to be in charge. And that person, the, the, the minister of music, <laughs> made a big stink about everything. In fact, he condemned, oh, she's not married, she's pregnant, she's in sin, this and that. And he went on and on, rant and on and on. And it's just a bunch of mess, right? Divided the choir completely in half. In fact, we lost a good bunch of people mm -hmm. that was in the choir 
because of that, right? You find out later on he got a daughter that was not from his wife. Really? Where'd that come from? Huh? Where'd that come from? But yet, he was so busy judging this person, it couldn't look at itself. You know, that's why the scripture says, you know, before you try and take the speck out of somebody else's eye, you need to remove the plank out of your own. In other words, you don't have no place, nothing to stand on to be judging or condemning anybody else, because what about what you're doing? And if you say, well, I'm not doing nothing, then maybe you, that's even worse, because you know now you're calling yourself righteous. Yeah, you're doing something. <laughs> you're doing something. You just won't admit to it. Right. And then you're just showing how self-righteous that you know that you are, and you think that you don't need Jesus because you got this. Mm. Now watch this. Romans 1 and 1 in the message version. It says those people are on a dark spiral downward. But if you think just that him leaves him. you that's him that I, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But if you think that that leaves you on a high ground where you can point the finger at others, think again. Every time you criticize someone, you condemn yourself. It takes one to know one. Judgmental criticism of others it is a well-known way of escaping, detecting in your own crimes and misdemeanors. But God isn't so easily diverted. He sees right through all such smoke screens and holds you to what you've done. So, if you can read and understand what was just said in that passage right there, you would not be so quick to judge or criticize someone else. And what was that you read, Romans? This was Romans 1, in verse, yeah, Romans 1 and 2, okay, and in the message version. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, this, being grounded in grace grounded in love, it teaches us to love. When you're rooted, that means that you're drawing your nourishment from what you're rooted in. When you're rooted in love, your nourishment should be love. Amen? You should be filled with love. You said that was Romans 1 and 1 in the message? In the message, yes. I'm sorry. Okay, Romans yeah, 2 like, and 1. Like, Thank you for that correction. Romans 2 and 1 in the message. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's it. Amen. That's, that's that. That's what we're at. Yeah. So, again, when we talk about being grounded in grace, grounded in love, grounded in Jesus, this is where we draw our nourishment from. And that's what we're being nourished with is love. This is what we should be giving out. Love. But most people forget the place that they eat from. You have a plate set before you with all the things that is to nourish your body. You got vegetables, you got your meat, your, some carbs, but everything is to help you grow, nourish your body. But as soon as you eat that, the only thing you can remember is the dessert you're about to eat. You forgot about what, what, what you're growing from most of the time, you don't want to eat that because you see the dessert. So a lot of people don't want to read the word of God because they see the worldly things. They see other things that's pleasing to their eyes and to their flesh more so than their spirit. I see you, Elder. So we definitely have to be grounded in grace, grounded in love, that we are desiring more love from the word of God. And the more love we get from the word of God is the more love we can give to others. Amen. Go ahead, Elder. Man, just as you was thinking, that it, even within the uh, the churches, the household faith, people see other people getting blessed, and so they chasing after their blessing instead of <laughs> chasing after Jesus. Amen. Instead of chasing after the Creator, they're chasing after the created. Mm -hmm. Instead of, and as I, we mentioned before, they looking at everybody else's plate instead of getting the nourishment on their own plate. They don't, they don't want to draw the nourishment on their plate. They don't want to get what God has for them. They want to get what God has for somebody else. No, you got to get what God has for you. Amen. And what he has for you is just for you. Amen. It's what he has for you, love. 
and he has a special kind of love just for you. And guess what? He has a special kind of love for everybody. And when you have that relationship with him, it's an intimate love that where you feel, man, this is only just between me and him. Amen. Because it's nobody else's business. So Amen. you make it personal. This is just me and him. Amen. This, he has a special kind of love for me. We, we got a special thing going on. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Well, looks like we're coming to the end of this study for tonight. Amen. I want to thank those that tuned in by way of internet. Amen. I just want to make sure that you understand being grounded in grace means to be grounded in love, to be grounded in Jesus Christ. Amen. And here in Christian Freedom Ministries, Jesus is Lord. We love you. And please. Amen. Praise God. There won't be any Bible studies next week. Amen. Um, due to the holiday. Amen. I pray that everyone enjoy their Thanksgiving. If you have the opportunity to bless someone else during the holiday season, please do so and watch how God will bless you. As a matter of fact, he's already blessed you to bless someone else. So here at Christian Freedom Ministries, we say we love you. Jesus is Lord.